It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the best. It was the best. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the best. You stupid monkey. <laughs> Sports seems to have developed a if it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality to the look and feel of FIFA 20, choosing to stick to the exact same setup as they have for the previous four editions. FIFA 16 was the last time we saw a significant overhaul in the look and feel of the menu system, and pretty much the game in general. It showed a bold new style choice and aligned with the new colour palette of the Premier League at the time. In the latest iteration, they've gone for a full Dayglow red colour theme or coral, if you will, complete with a leopard print trim. And an attitude that says, who cares? It's only fashion. That Hansel's so hot right now. And the good news here is that FIFA 20 is now fully compliant with OHNS requirements for attending a construction site. If that's something that's going to put you off the game, you can stop right now. And to the credit of EA Sports, that's exactly where the similarities to previous versions end. Because the core gameplay for FIFA 20 is intense, exciting, and completely new. Gameplay upgrades mean that the players are now more responsive. EA have turned off the game's traction control and have allowed full access to player movement. It's responsive and intuitive. I actually found myself amazed at how natural the whole experience was. Finally, players are doing what they're supposed to, which means I'm yelling at my TV less frequently. Experienced hands will almost immediately notice the difference in how your players respond, and once you get a handle on it, you'll be appreciating the changes and scoring for fun. The safety controls have also been switched off for shooting. You'll have a lot more opportunity to score where and when you like. Updates have been applied to the physics of the football and player movement that mean you'll find yourself in the right place at the right time more often than not with the ability to perform more agile strikes on goal. And while all of these features have added speed and control to your players, the newly revamped free kick controls have gone down a technically specific path. If you rotate thumbsticks and combine it with a series of button taps at the right time, you'll fly past the wall. But if you get the combination wrong, you're either going to kick the ball out of the stadium or open a portal to another dimension. It's needlessly complex and runs against the fun, free-flowing nature of the rest of the game. FIFA 20 has taken a page out of the playbook of PES 19 by ramping things up to a frenetic pace. There's less of a focus on the midfield battle and more on the end-to-end -end long plays. It's interesting to see this change in pace, as now we have PES 20 moving back to the slower, more tactical game style, and we've got FIFA 20 pushing the new Volta game mode. Now, speaking of Volta, well, it's definitely a game mode. This year, you'll be able to play a variety of different smaller team games as you take on players in what is essentially a modern-day take on the previously standalone title, FIFA Street. If you thought the gameplay in the regular mode was fast, wait till you play three-a-side pickup games on a pitch figuratively the size of a ping-pong table. It's absolute chaos, as anyone who has played indoor football or futsal would have experienced. I'm glad they've chosen to include this as part of the FIFA 20 package, and it'll be interesting to see if this idea takes off in the extremely competitive multiplayer world, especially as FIFA already has a fantastic community within the traditional gameplay style. I will say that if this was a standalone title, I wouldn't be recommending picking it up. Volta definitely works best as a companion piece to a fully packaged game. And now the disappointing news. The Ultimate Team Mode and the associated game packs are still here and they are just as expensive and overbearing as they've always been. If you're not interested in paying anything extra for a full priced game, you should be able to grind out a good team just in time to pick up a copy of FIFA 21. You can be sure that there are people who are willing to pay more than double the box price of the game to get the top players and associated gear. Volta fans, don't worry, we haven't forgotten about you. We've introduced a whole new currency called Volta Coins. Because, of course. They work essentially the same way as V-Bucks do in the NBA 2K series.
One of the great features of the FIFA series is that they carry over your game profile from previous seasons, so that you won't have to worry about remapping the newly formatted controls to your regular setup. It's literally plug and play. You also carry over your experience credits, which you can use to buy a new kit for your players, different skins for footballs, celebrations, and other buffs for your single player careers. But it would have been nice if they'd applied the same logic to the Ultimate Team mode. But I mean, where's the fun in that? FIFA 20 has gotten so hashtag fresh, you'll think that EA grew a foot long beard, got a neck tattoo, and started selling a selection of locally sourced kombucha from the back of a combi van. Although getting through the tired five year old menu system will test the patience of regular players of the game, once you get out on the pitch, you'll see what all the fuss is about. For more on FIFA 20 and other games, subscribe now to Shake and Not Nerd on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Or subscribe to us on iTunes, Spotify, or your nearest podcatcher.